Hello everyone and welcome again to Pain Lish Universal Conversation with myself and well. I'm always delighted to have you guys join us. As you know, this conversation is all about inspirational guests from around the world where they talk about their own journey of living with more, any kind of pain and finding their own joy. Today we'll be talking to a renowned artist, Adam Metinikis, and he'll be telling us about his own way that he's found his joy through visual art. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about him. So Adam studied interior and architecture, decorative art and design, and is now a renowned artist and teacher. And he continues to experiment as an artist on the computer generated visual media. As you know, this is a new world where we live in and the traditional ways of art is totally changed. People are looking to integrate the younger generation to join this art world and see it from a different perspective. Adam was born in Poland, but is a Polish descendant. He moved to Athens, Greece, Greece in 1982, studied interior architecture, decorative art and design in Athens, had been occupied with the interior design, graphic design, and 3D visualization as an artist and tutor. And since the year 2000, he's working and experimenting on artistic computer generating visual media. This is the 3D art, rendering animation, digital sculpturing, digital video, and new media, painting and photography. He's a member of the Greek Chambers of Fine Art, lives and works in Greece, Poland, and United Kingdom. His solo work is amazing. He has a whole list of things he's achieved to date. So he'll be talking about how he got started. He's given talks in numerous places. His works and interview has been published in numerous interview and uh, international and reviews. I am so glad that he's taking the time out of his busy schedule to talk to us. Meets our non-artist, Adam, as he shares his story. Well, hello everyone and welcome again to Painless Universal, a conversation with myself and Walsh. Have you ever thought about art? I mean, if you look around, everything is art. Whether we like it or not, whether you see it or not, everything is art. The way we look, the real estate around us, the trees, everything is art. Our conversation today was with Adam. He's a well-known visual artist and he'll be telling us about his own journey, how he got here. How, what it means to be a visual artist and what he hopes to inspire, you know, especially inspire younger generation to get the love, find the love in things they see and bring out, bring up, pick up the pain out of art and find out joy again. Adam, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm well, I'm very, very well. Um, I'm really delighted to not honestly talk to you because as much as I've described you, but there's so much about you. You know, when we look at your profile, you studied interior architecture, the creative art and design, and you're now a world-renowned artist and teacher as well. Let's not forget that bit. And you continue to explore the computer-generated visual media, which is a very new concept about art, because when you think about art, you think about the traditional way of looking at art, but you're looking at the other side, et cetera. Before we get started into all of that, can you briefly tell us, who are you, Adam? Well, this is a really tough question from the beginning, but I like it. First of all, uh, what you said in the introduction is, uh, I really resonate with it. Everything is art, because I believe that art is, uh, universal to lend your word uh, expression yeah. we we express ourselves through art uh, okay the professional artists do it in a way so that they support themselves you know uh, as, a, as a profession but everyone for me everyone is a kind of an artist everyone expresses and not only person i think that everything tries to express something yeah. we are expressing the will of the I don't know the universe. I don't, I'm still trying to find out, and this is my journey. Well, uh, my name is Adam Martinakis. I was born in Poland um, uh, when it was still a communist regime many years ago. My father was Greek, my mother is Polish. And uh, when I was 10, I came to Greece, uh, to Athens. So, from a very small city in Poland, which was, uh, as I said, in a communist regime and also in big crisis at that time. 
uh, economical, uh, political also. We came to a very big city uh, to the south, the Western Europe, mm -hmm. it was, Greece was Western country. And uh, this was kind of a shock for me. And I think uh, it, it shaped me in a very specific way. And uh, at that moment, because when I came to Greece, I didn't speak any Greek. So it was a little tough for me to adapt to the new situation. And, uh, but I managed, I was young, 10 years old. Uh, but everything was different, you know, everything. It's, it's, it's from the, Poland is a Northern country. It's quite cold. The people are different, you know. Uh, Greece is very much open. It's, uh, the people are very open to themselves, to, to, to the others and uh, maybe to themselves too, I don't know. Uh, but uh, the food is different, everything is different. Mm -hmm. So I always had, um, I like two things very much. I like maps, ge geography, mm -hmm. and I like the arts. And I decided to become an artist and uh, also uh, traveled a lot. So I also, you know, satisfy my other uh, need <laughs> with the map geography to visit. Uh, I studied, I, did, I didn't have any intention to become a visualist, fine artist. Uh, I studied interior design. I, I wasn't even sure if I liked interior. I mean, I liked it, but I, I didn't know if I could become an interior designer because, you know, studying and practicing something is not the same thing. Sometimes it's a total different things. And uh, even when I was studying, that's why the, the school was uh, four years and I did it nine years. So I was postponing things I, I really liked because at that time I had the ability to study everything. I like to study, I like to observe. Mm -hmm. And uh, as an artist now, I, I think it's a very big part of, 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 of creating. I mean, it's part of creating, it's also observing. Mm -hmm. Because, and I always say that, that uh, when you're an artist, you're an artist 24 hours a day. E even when you sleep, you're an artist. It's not quite a job. It's, it's, it's kind of a condition, I don't know. It's, you, you're always thinking about art. You see something, and you and you and you and it's art it can become art it's what you said is there's art everywhere right. and i'm not talking only about beauty because uh, you know a lot of people they say art is beauty is not anymore uh, a lot of things now art is very much complicated now like oral life because uh, you know society and arts are very much uh, connected mm -hmm. i don't know if uh, art is kind of a reflection of society or maybe sometimes even life is inspired by art, by films, by many things, uh, by, by books. There are so many things that... Uh, so uh, to tell you wh who I am, it's not easy to, to answer because I, I still don't know I shape myself every day. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a big question because I think if anyone, and it's a question to everybody, yeah. uh, who am I? Uh, it, can answer, you know, a lot of things, I believe, that a lot of things that are a riddle in, in, in life, I think, that uh, what are we, what, what is all this? And my work is actually based a lot uh, about this question, those existential questions and philosophy questions. So I'm somebody who's trying to find out maybe who I am, and maybe this stays to the end of my life, but uh, uh, the things that I find are very interesting. I don't always try to criticize, you know, myself or uh, I try to understand also myself. Because I don't always understand myself. Uh, it's even harder with others. So <laughs> we don't always understand ourselves. It's, it's, it's a big thing also this. Well, Adam, saying that, I love what you just said. Who am I? You said, um, I'm, all, I'm just trying to figure out who I am because I have to keep yeah. Finding out, and I might never find out until I'm dead. But I think that's the essence of creativity. Creativity is that you can't find who you are, else you stop creating. The moment you find it, the very nice out. said. Yeah. So you need to keep um, every day. You have to rediscover something different, and that's that's the joy exactly. of what you do. And that's, that's the beauty of life, also. You yes, know, the exactly. diversity and everything. Exactly. So you know, when you look back at your childhood growing up, because, you know, you look at your work, it's so unique, so creative, it's so fascinating. Did that stem from your family? Did you, any of your family, your mother, your father, or your sibling at all, did anyone have that creativity in their family at all? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, like I said, everyone is, is an artist in its own terms, but uh, no one had, uh, you know, professional creativity. My father just played uh, 
uh, some some music. I don't play music at all. I have nothing to do with music. It's something that escaped me somehow. <laughs> because I, I, I in, in visual arts, I have tried a lot of uh, a different forms so far. I, I tried ceramics, painting, sculpture, graphic design, video. I still do video. And uh, then I went into uh, digital uh, realm. And uh, uh, I, I don't think that I was in an environment, uh, the family environment that inspired me as an artist. But uh, there were some issues in my, in my, in my childhood. Uh, as we, uh, so that we speak about pain. Uh, it, it's not that it wasn't nice or something, but uh, there were some problem, fam uh, family problems there. And um, I think th th those problems made me uh, think more, you know, try to find solutions, try to understand maybe. Why is this happening and why is this affecting us, me and my sister, uh, and not everybody there? And uh, maybe it was a trigger. Maybe, I, I don't know. It might have been. I, mean, I think it's... Like, yeah, 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 it could be. It could yeah, be. Yeah, a lot of things that they trigger, our pain trigger some other kind of creativity that we never see because it's almost a way of numbing that part of life that we don't want to be part of and we create a bit a beautiful world which you've just really created and it's honestly i totally agree no <laughs> totally so um you say the art is a bridge so yes. between the spirit and the material the living and the absent the personal and the universe why do you say this this is such a unique say quote Okay, you know that, um, I don't know if still uh, there is this thing about it, but uh, the artist uh, some time ago, because everything is changing, you know, you said that about, uh, about traditional arts before and now there's digital and it's, it's everything now can become art, you know, I mean the tools for art, it, it's, it's everything. And I had to write, you know, the, the statement. So I, I had, and, and then I said, oh, I need to write it. And I postponed it, I postponed it. And I said, no, no, I need to write it. And I said, okay, you are going to write the essence of what you're looking for and what you think about what you're doing, what you're serving and everything. I believe that art is really a bridge. It's really a bridge between the spiritual world and the material world. And I, I, I don't, I, it's, it's saying, those are words actually, but when I, when, I, when I wrote this, I was totally convinced that there are two separated things. I don't believe so anymore. I, my, my, but my philosophy you know, it changes all the time. I think it's good. Mm -hmm. Now I believe that everything is spiritual. What, I, I don't deny this material world, but I think that it's, there is so much more. The, the, the older I become, the more I know, I come to the statement that Socrates said, you know, that uh, all I know is that I don't know anything. And the more you know, you understand that this world is so complicated. There is so much more, so much more. And mm. it's much more than what we can see. But in any case, uh, spirituality mm. and material, I think they, they, they come together. It's, it's, it's one thing. I mean, your feelings, our feelings, they, it's not material actually, but they can be expressed in material. When you hug somebody, it's a, you touch somebody, you know, it becomes kind of material, but the feeling of it, it's always spiritual, it's, it's spirit. I'm not a, a, a religious person, you know, uh, but uh, when I say spirituality, I don't mean, you know, necessarily uh, religion. I'm not against any religion. I believe that everybody should follow what their heart says. Uh, but uh, I believe that there is so, so much more uh, uh, um, beside what we see. And uh, I don't believe actually, you know, in the, in the term that we are, we are used to see things that there's a beginning and an end because we see people and other animals and, you know, born and die. And, and, and this is a, a, really, a really pain also that we, bear, yeah, that we carry with, our, with ourselves, you know, the fear of death. And uh, not only, <laughs> there are a lot of, fears that we have. I have a lot of fears. I, I, I suffer from phobias. And, uh, you know, sometimes those phobias are totally, you know, not logical. I don't think that fear has any logic. Uh, it doesn't. You know, when you look at it, it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't really any have any logic. And, and sometimes we just feel no. we've, been, we've allowed ourselves that. No, it's an expression. It's an expression of something. There is a root somewhere and it's an expression of something. So it's the same with the art. When, that's why, you know, there is also some, some saying, 
a, a lot of questions I have that what did you mean with the artwork and so there's a it really doesn't matter what I mean yeah. because it's my point of view uh, the artwork is not complete without the audience so the audience the the art uh, a lover or a collector or anyone who likes to look at art and 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 uh, he will probably find and everybody will do this uh, he, it's only temperatious about things and uh, and this is very nice this is the conversation and, and communication because art for me is communication it's a language when you look at um your artwork today because it's really you know it's fascinating how would you explore us explore the unknown through your art, because there's a lot of unknown ter territories you're going into. How do you explore it? How do you get to that path? Uh, so sometimes they ask me about inspiration, and I say that everything inspiring. I mean, uh, you go for a walk. Like I said before, you can see a million things that can inspire you, or a, a thought can just pop up like this, and this can become an artwork. So I, I'm not worried about inspiration. I always have ideas. I, have, I believe I have trained my mind to create ideas all the time. Now I'm making an, a break, actually, because for 20 years I was working every day almost, you know, like, I mean, practical, in front of the computer, many hours. Uh, and now I'm, 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 I don't know if I'm uh, going through a different kind of change. And uh, I try to think and to look back, as you asked me, there is always unknown in the art. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to create. Each time there's always a need to create, a need to expression. And there, there, there will always come, not always, okay, sometimes, you know, uh, you start with a good mood, but then something changes or, or external, you know, disturbances may come or whatever. And you don't finalize, finalize or you just stop making this work and start another one etc etc so uh, creating is is a kind of unknown it's like our every day we don't know what happens next and this is the beauty of life we try to plan this is you know we are humans we are different than animals animals don't plan i have a dog and i don't see her mm, today i'm gonna do this i don't think she thinks this way she's very you know, spontaneous and with instinct totally which we also have we also have instinct, but we have also, you know, metacognition. We have a uh, different kind of, uh, how to say it, upper intelligence, upper okay. comparing to the, to the, uh, so it's always a, a dive into the unknown. And there's always a hope to find something. And I'm not afraid of finding something that might maybe make me feel bad for a moment because I will try to understand. Ooh, I like I like the way you uh, you describe it, your dog, and it's true. The animals they just go and go for it. They're they like, they are, they are, you know, they are like two children. You know, sometimes I envy her, you know, because there are so many things in my head, and you know, pushing me, and you know, and they program and do this and do this, and she's just like, are we going for the walk? <laughs> but okay, she, you see, but she has a preference. She's waiting for. It. She doesn't plan it because she cannot. Yes. But she, she has needs, she has like, she, 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 she likes to do things that she loves and yeah. uh, like us. Yeah, yes, exactly. But we just take our own a little bit of a board, which is sometimes saturates us. But that's exactly. the Does that come through? Because, you know, when you look at, you know, I always look at top artists and I always feel like they must have suffered some kind of pain or, or I think so. not being able to come up. Because, I, you know, we human beings, like, we are, our biggest problem is that we tend to want to be perfect, want to, this, this um, big thing to be better than the next big thing. So we always worried about if I, you know, even artists as well, when you look at artists, there's this thing, they always worry about this one hit wonder. If I release this album today, it's going to be doing great. What if tomorrow and they'll, I'll be in of this one hit wonder? In terms of art, have you ever suffered the pain of not being able to come up with the next, I don't think this would be you because um, from what you think, of the next big idea for your work? Well, in the way you suffer, where you go through that long period of time where you don't even know what you're going to do next, has that happened to you? Not exactly. This is the break that I'm doing now, which is not actually a break because I'm working in my head with a lot of stuff, but I'm not a kind of... I'm not a kind of uh, artist that even takes notes or makes sketches, anything. I'm not afraid of uh, inspiration. There's so many things to talk about in this life, I, I, in this universe, I would say. We're part of the universe. Mm -hmm. And, um, but uh, because I think that everybody's um, perceiving and uh, understanding and um, 
living the time as we as it goes in a different way i think also the animals as i said before but i think that it happens to the people too uh, some people have different uh, sense of time i have a friend he's always late always late and you know very long i sometimes two hours so and, and i've tried i said one to and, and i i understand that this is the nature of of, of him i you know uh, uh, there are times that I, I, I go into some kind of melancholy that I'm not going to do a, a, a good work, uh, you know, uh, or uh, the work will not be good enough, uh, or I will not express the way that I would like to, uh, which is always the case, but at least, you know, <laughs> you say at, at the point you say it's okay, it's satisfactory. To me, it can go out, it, it can be published and be seen by other people because I believe that it's got the essence that I would like to talk about. And uh, there is, but in any case, there is always something that I have in mind. I start with the unknown, but during the, the, the creation, there's always something that is coming and it's evolving as a story. Mm. There's always a story. I believe that our minds uh, I, I don't know if I, I'm not very good at words, you know, English is also my third language, I speak Greek, Polish, and I'm not good at language, and um, I think that um, uh, it, it creates, our mind creates a story, and maybe it's even addicted to story, or maybe it's it's nature, everything, it, uh, our mind is looking, our brain is looking at us a story, yeah. so everything is a story, I mean, our life, like, you asked me, who am I, and I started to talk like a story, and it's look i was thinking about it the other day it's a simple thing but i was watching a, a movie and I, I was very you know into it and i started to cry you know a little because it was very touching and i said but you know this is all lies how can how can you cry like this and sometimes you know my father died and i didn't cry it doesn't mean i was not in pain yeah. but it's also you know crying is also an expression you express it because you live the story our brains they love the stories and i think they love lies also you know it's it's really strange thing absolutely i love this <laughs> sometimes i cannot understand this lot of what i'm trying and i but i really you know when i was uh, uh very young i mean teenager or something i read uh, i i like philosophy a lot mm -hmm. i i read um, a book from heidegger i don't remember the, the name exactly now and and uh, he, he, he's very, he, at, at least I haven't read Heidegger for a long time, but at that time I couldn't understand anything. And when I was reading, 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 but I say, but I'm feeling, I'm sensing with instinct that he's saying something important. And when I got something, I was so happy that I got it, that I made a story of it, you know, reading, reading so much, not understanding, and suddenly understanding something is so happy. <laughs> No, it's it's the same with this life. I, if I understand something, I'm so happy. And maybe you know it can be a lie. You can replace it with another philosophy later, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's it's really it's that really is that is unbelievable. That's beautiful. It's wow. it, it's it's really beauty. I think this world is beautiful. I was thinking this uh, today on the beach. I, I live by a beach. I'm a very lucky guy. You know, I live on the island of Crete. Yeah. And uh, every day I uh, for few months now i had a chance to to see uh, the sea every day and it's such a beautiful thing you know in general nature it helps me you know to make to 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 take my pieces uh, together and everything resolve things and also with arts but i tell you i'm i'm artist all the time so any problem for me is artistic i think so. and anything and anything you could just solve it because i think you're such in a beautiful place where you are and just seeing that water and the waves, I mean, that makes it phenomenal. Adam, I have to ask you, because a lot of people might be wondering, what is your art? When you say visual art, what, what is visual art? And, you know, how did you think about this concept? What is vi visual art? Yes, because a lot of some people might come, come on there and say, okay, what is Okay, this? the general term for visual art is actually, there is a group of, of um, that you need also vision, you know, too. This is, it starts as a simple uh, idea, like uh, painting, uh, sculpture, uh, you need the, the, for example, music is not visual art, you, you use your, your ears to, 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 to feel it, to, to understand it, uh, 
no, there's not understanding art is not always a thing you know it's sometimes it's feeling it it's it's different sometimes different things and uh yeah this this is actually it's a group of of artistic activities that uh, belong to to uh, fine arts is visual arts in general mm. so can you describe your work from the beginning uh from the idea then it goes into idea to appear to a finished product how does that happen uh, I work on the I, I work on 3D digital 3D. So uh, I use computers. Uh, so but I'm I don't have a, a studio. Let's say I have a studio because I paint all some time. But uh, my studio actually is a computer and it's it's a, it's a clean job. Some somebody said in an interview that uh, he is not bothering with dirt and paint and he is uh, <laughs> you know digitally. I liked uh, I liked uh, when I, when I was in uh, first time in touch with 3D. It wasn't for the arts; it was for the uh, in, uh, interior design, which is also applied arts. Okay, uh, it was. Uh, I started uh, learning it by myself like, more than twenty years ago. It wasn't. It was very hard at that time. The computers were not that fast. Uh, there was no internet practically. Now you can learn anything from the almost anything from the internet. You can search and you can you can become a digital artist by tutorials on YouTube or many other uh, tutorials around the, the net. Uh, but then there was only books. Uh, you had to take the book. So I started uh, 3D for uh, presenting because uh, 3D and uh, photorealism is very good for presenting ideas as an architect, interior designer, so that the clients can see what you're going to design. Yeah. So I started like this, but then I really liked it. I really liked sitting on the computer and playing. And uh, then I started to make spaces. And uh, because the level of uh, realism is quite close to the uh, reality now, yeah. and in, before even, even 15 years now, uh, I was uh, wondering what will happen if I would do this, if I put this slide, this color, and this, this, this. So like a game, you know, and... Uh, I really like it. I stopped being interior designer and I started to work as um, a 3D, uh, 3D designer uh, uh, for other architects, uh, presenting their ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, they sent me their plans. We yeah. were talking and I was presenting, I was building it in a photorealistic way so that the, their clients and they can have a better sense of what they are going to create. It saves money, time, a lot of things. It's uh, in the industry, this is a must now, you know. Uh, but by the time I wasn't satisfied, you know, I'm always looking for something more and more and different. I'm not easy to satisfy. <laughs> and uh, I started to do my own designs. I started first with architecture. If you look at my work, I mean, 15 years ago, you will see a lot of architectural yeah. spaces. Uh, and um, in general, I'm, I'm interested in the space. I, I love the, the, the space. This might, might uh, be connected with the uh, geography, maybe that uh, I told that I was interested. The maps. I was always when I was looking at the maps. I was saying how it might look, how how the the, the mountains and the rivers there it looks like, and and uh, but and slowly it it became like um, I was working with uh, 3D architecture and uh, doing my artwork. And then in, nine, in 2009, I won an international competition in Luxembourg. And this was, I think, uh, like a button for me because I got so good critique there. I was the, the first there. I saw the artworks. It was like an okay from the universe that you can go and become only an artist. Yeah. And I have the luck to live only from my art. I, I don't have to. And I also, <laughs> I, I have the luck to, to, to not even take commissions now. I just, you know, I, I, I choose from the commissions that I, I will do. And not there are not so many, you know. So... Money is always an issue, okay, but it's not an, an, an urgent issue, so that I can, I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky in this ter on those terms. So who are your typical clients? Um, if someone wants to view your work, how do they view it? Because this digital work, we're so used to the visual, the traditional way. How is yes. your work, work shown then? Well, I have a, the clients now are the collectors, uh, mainly, mm -hmm. uh, who buy the artworks at uh, the galleries or uh, from me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a diversity of people. There are a lot of young people now because you know the three D is is uh, the young people they played games. 
you know, the, the video games, etc. And there is a sense a little uh, in my works, like it's not totally realistic. I don't want it to be. I want it to be a little fake or play with... Uh, mm. uh, I, I like this whole idea. And um, one of the things that uh, brought me into this, uh, into 3D is, like I said about Heidegger. Heidegger was saying that art is mainly of spiritual uh, essence and spiritual is that you cannot touch actually it's it's in the feelings it's in, in, in this in this kind of uh, sense and uh, digital art is like this you just play with pixels you don't touch them actually mm -hmm. but uh, i do have output i do have uh, physical works i print them in a specific way it's very uh, um, it's very expensive also way they are it's called diasec but i also sell uh, digital now with the nfts uh, but but the collectors, I think, are any kind. There are men, women, any kind of uh, b b people from any country, uh, any age, e everything. Yeah. And I like that because I think that they touch, and I can communicate with people from any age, any 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 country. I love this. Yeah, no, that's really true. Um, I mean, it just. It's a new way of um, doing that and it's making it more interesting for the young ones because I think we're losing arts. If you go to a most museum, we're losing the young ones, no, no, no longer be, being interested in art. But this way, you've come up with this way and more young people are more relatable. If you're to give advice to um, the younger one and to encourage them to take on your work, what, would, what, what kind of advice would you give to a young person? But you mean to the artists or generally? Just general, to young people yeah. come on board. And, um... Well, I, I, I would say this to, the, uh, to anyone and to any kind of art, just, just follow your instinct. It's, it's, we are not going to communicate with everyone in, in this life. Uh, it's, it's, it's so diverse. It's intentionally diverse. It's inten intentionally complicated. We have uh, progressed um, technology so much, science and everything, and still still we don't know much we don't know what is conscience yeah. you know there is no scientific answer what is conscience and, and and you know conscience might be everything exactly in fact if you if you think about it all we have is our experience our conscience yeah. so i would say to them to look at it not with any you know intentional to, to find something just let the heart go wildly you like it, you don't like it. If there's a part that you like, th there are works in other artists, for example, that I like only a part or, or even in mine. There are works that I have started from a minor detail and then I started to build it. That was lost somewhere, uh, the, the, the detail, <laughs> but it became something bigger than this. Mm -hmm. So I, I say go wild because I also work with uh, Instinct a lot. So maybe two Instincts can come together and can, they can communicate and, the art has given me the ability to um, have the, the, the luck to talk, like, like now, with a lot of people, very interesting people. And uh, this is a richness in life, I think, that uh, we can communicate and art can be like an inspiration for this. It's, for, for me, I, I, I will never say that art is everything. No, it's art is part of our life. I, I have also other activities that I really love, uh, but... Yeah. Uh, Yes, everybody. But because it's really something special. I mean, it's 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 you can dig very much inside the human psyche, you know, with with art, and uh, starting with me, of course. But I think that we have a lot of similarities. I, in my art, I try to to look for the similarities that we have, not the differences that we have. Hmm. It's it's easy to see different. Everybody has a different name. Everyone is uh, unique. Yeah. That's the biggest difference, and therefore alone, you know, yeah. since you are uh, unique. Absolutely. This is another pain, universal pain that we carry, that we are alone. And this is death and, and, and loneliness, I think, from the, uh, from the philosophical uh, point of view, in my opinion, are, are big burdens. Absolutely. You're yeah. also a teacher. You teach, um, you teach art to students. And how do you bring the best artistic in students when you teach them? Well, how do you teach them this? I, I don't teach anymore for, for, for a long time, but I had it in, in the bio because I, I used to teach for many years, but I always try to, first, I, I always try to understand the person. I mean, what he likes, because 
uh, there's a big problem uh, on the younger artists about the inspiration. I can see that in the, um, uh, especially in the, the new NFT thing, because it's a, like, a, like a movement, kind of a movement, the, 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 the ele electronical and blockchain art, that the crypto art that it's called. And uh, there, there are a lot of new artists, young people that have come. And uh, although I see a really, a really big uh, need to express, I see the love for this. I see the, the hours that they spend. I can see it because I've been this in, in, in so many years. But I, I, I sense a lack of, um, of, of, of focusing on what they want to tell about. And maybe it's, it's the age, maybe it's the time that we're living, because every time that, that humanity has passed, it's, it's unique also. Everything is unique in this universe. There is no same uh, time, there's no same moment. It's like Heraclitus, you're never going to cross the same river. Absolutely. Although sometimes things look the same and uh, it, 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 it is something else in your mind. When I, when I feel like empty of things, I want to change. This is not the, 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 uh, the world doesn't change. It's you that need a change. It's something inside you that, uh, that's shouting for, for something different, something a bigger change maybe. I don't know. So I'm trying to encourage them uh, with, uh, and I'm trying to tell them that everything is inspired, but look into yourself because there you will find a lot of answers, not everything, but a lot of answers. Mm -hmm. And the more you know about you, the more you will know about the rest, I think. And then it starts to make sense in a way. And then it, it won't make sense. And then again, it will make sense. And it's, it's, a, it's an odyssey, you know, yeah, <laughs> like, like, like life. <laughs> Yeah, it's like look into yourself and see what yeah. you're looking for, and that will replicate. I have to ask you before I get to the final question. In 2015, right. you did an exhibition in Denmark entitled Metaverse, right? This is the big word right now. We see Facebook, yeah. yeah, that name. Now, this is the mainstream concept. You did something in 2015, and now this Met Metaverse is a mainstream concept. How do you see art bring, being a part of the new frontier? You've just talked briefly about it, but how do you see art? Because art, the way we have seen art, especially with the youths, whether we like it or not, this younger generation are going to look at art in a different way. If we want to incorporate them, we need to embrace what they're doing. How do you see it? Because you've started this since, since 2015. What next? <laughs> Nobody knows the future, but you know, I'm by nature, um, although everything that is happening and not good things are happening actually, mm -hmm. but you know, in the, in the whole, uh, history of humanity, many not good things were happening all the time. Mm -hmm. This is our nature. We are a project in time, I believe, so humans and everything. It's a project, but we are very special, I think. The, the metacognition intelligence that we have is something really, really mm -hmm. different than everything we see. And I don't know, I see, I'm, I'm very much interested in science, I'm very much interested in the, into looking at the universe, the stars and everything. I read a lot about the Big Bang, the star, the explosions and everything or its models uh, the the big bang at least i i think i think that um uh, we are in a turning point in in uh, in, um, in in our species and in our society mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of things and dangerous things also happening because we are entering and we are trying and we are entering uh, how to say it uh, in, a, in, a, in a concept of understanding uh, that we are alone in a planet, that it's kind of an island in space, because we have the science, we have, we have the tools to see. And we are stuck all together, I have made a work on it. It's called Insiders, but a lot of people you know, want to get out of Earth, like something like this. Uh, because of those changes, uh, there are a lot of problems, you know, there are a lot of issues. We try to understand ourselves in the new position. Things are changing very fast. A lot of people have problem of um, digesting these changes. They think that they don't belong to, mm. to the new that is coming. And the new is not coming. It's here already. <laughs> it's, it's here. We are, uh, you know, in the next step of the new and the next step of the new, we have to get used to new, but it was always like this. The problem is that it's changing very fast. Yeah. But I say to people also, and the young are, because they have anxiety about what to do. You know, anxiety is a problem of, you know, at least 
you know, because still there are a lot of people who suffer from lack of food, you know, water and wars. Yeah. Now it's, it's a big problem. But in general, if you take, we are now like 8 billion people. I made a question to Google the other day, how many people ever existed? And Google told me it was like 130 billion people. I mean, from the beginning on Neanderthal or, or Homo sapiens, how many Homo sapiens, I think, yes. And 8, million, 8 billion in one, 130 is a big number. That means a lot of people are living right now comparing to other ages. And still we manage to feed the people to live, okay, not always peacefully, mm -hmm. but somehow we manage. Mm -hmm. And I am positive, and I think that arts have a really big place into this because it's a human expression. It helps us to find a way, to find the meaning. And I think that one of the biggest problems that humans have, mm -hmm. and hence the anxiety, the mental problems, and sometimes me, I am not something too different, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe we were similar, but a little different, unique, uh, is the lack of, uh, of uh, how to call it, um, not reason, uh, a purpose, like, like meaning, meaning, that's a word, lack of meaning. And I believe that we have become a little too much materialistic. We, I understand the meaning of money as a tool, but it's a tool. Yeah. When you are talking, I'm going. I want to make money. We are not thinking of making money. Looking at the money, it's yeah. spending it with friends, with going there and it, for experiences. Yeah. Yeah. But it it has become like a purpose, you know. Uh, it's it's not the purpose of life. The purpose it's living it. I mean, enjoying and trying to find. I don't know. This is my point of view. Everybody can have a different. No, no, I know. I, I, Adam, I love your point of view because it's actually true. We have a different meaning. We have a different, um, we, for, we forget the purpose of life and life is just a beautiful part of life. Do you see the future of art changing um, with the um, metaverse? Do you see that future changing? Well, the, the metaverse, me, metaverse, uh, the meta, the beginning, this is also Facebook became, you know, yeah. uh, it's a Greek word. It means after. So we are talking about something that is after. Yes, it's a very catchy word now. I use the metaverse uh, in this exhibition that uh, you, you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And yes, in fact, that was, uh, I, I was thinking about it also, but it was, it was uh, circulating the meta, but not in the way that it is now because metaverse oh. became more uh, with blockchain, but there was blockchain already at that time. I was not at that time into blockchain, now I am. Uh, but it's, the word meta will be playing a lot. Meta, metacognition, for example, as I said, it's, it's actually in the terms of philosophies, is our ability to think in a different way, more uh, advanced, to say it very simply, intelligent. Mm. Um, Art will change, everything will change. And that's, that's the way it is. Okay. Everything will change. There will be always pain. I think pain, uh, you're doing great job with this. I really love the title also, Pain is Universal. But pain is universal also. Mm -hmm. We learn a lot of things with pain. Yeah. I, I've, if we can turn the pain into, and, and, and when, I'm, when I say pain, I mean also sadness, you know, anxiety, everything that is, yeah. you know, uncomfort. We don't want it. Uh, but it is for a reason. It's an alert. It's a sign. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it tries to, to, to teach you something. You will always most the deepest thing that i've learned in, in life it was when i was in pain actually when i was sad when i was uh, i don't know i was for example the most things i learned about uh, women was when i was in pain when i was you know i missed the girl that i i, I loved at the time i didn't have her yeah well, absolutely and you learn so much you learn how to love her better if she comes back to you you learn exactly. how to repeat that mistake because exactly pain teaches you i said to people you don't realize when you have pain you actually bless because without pain you don't know yeah, real pain but i'm not talking about the pain that is you know from accident then we go to the doctor and we have to deal with it like this and also there is there are levels of pain which are really really uh, that they cannot just take it and make it you know uh, they need a specialist 
That's there are a lot of people who have mental problems in each, but it's like a disease. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm talking that, you know, the, the level of, of anxiety and mental like problems that everybody faces in, in, in its life at some point. Absolutely. Sometimes higher dose and sometimes lower, but you're right. Yes, we, we, we learn from them. It's, it's kind of a bless. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Finally, Adam, finally, you go, you know, we're all humans. Why is art so important to in bringing joys to humans? Why is art so important? Because now I will, now I will say my philosophy of life, because I think we are here to enjoy. I think that the potentials of us, which we are a product, we are expression, we are a, an artistic product of the universe. We are an artwork. Every one of us is a kind of an artwork by nature, God, you can call it as you like. Mm -hmm. Each one of us. And we are uh, equipped with, with a lot of tools, sensory tools, uh, thinking tools, uh, you know, analytical tools, and many things we can also add to them, we can educate ourselves, we can, uh, we can start to make plants, uh, like I said, that the dog cannot, but we can do and uh, many times the plants work, sometimes it's even better, I never planned to be an artist and I become a famous artist, <laughs> you know, it's, it, <laughs> it's great, I, I, I I am not, you know, expecting anything from life, but uh, I try to plan. I Sometimes they don't <laughs> happen. It's okay. Uh, sometimes I'm sad because of that. Okay, also. But then it comes what you said that I try to learn what went wrong. Maybe I didn't want it. Maybe it was something else. You know, it's a conversation with yourself. Yeah. Like in my works, I have a lot of um, two figures, two, two persons. And many people, okay, there is, uh, they are talking about the love, they are talking about relations, they are talking in general about human conditions. But uh, after a point, I, re I didn't realize it from the beginning, but after a point, I realized that sometimes those two persons are the same. It's happening inside of you. Because sometimes there are different like uh, uh, kind of forces inside you uh, and contradictory. They, they contradict and they one tried to win the other. Yes. yes. And you don't know what to do. <laughs> it's happening in your head. You like this one, but the other makes sense. It's better do this, but I want this. And <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, but you see, you learn from this, um, the conversation and the dialogue and the communication yeah. is everywhere. Yeah. I, I, I th I'm thinking sometimes that, uh, Com uh, communication is probably one of the most important things. It solves so much problem, Adam. If we could just communicate, or if we could exactly just with open hearts and try to understand, you know. Exactly, and if we have even more time, keep looking at visual art because I think when you look at art, you just always it gives you that question. When you look at anything, an art. One thing I love about artwork is that it gives you that question. Why that painting? What was he trying to say? What was his meaning? But you see, uh, it's up to you to find out. Oh, it's I totally know. up to you. And you know, nobody can tell you that it's wrong. I have heard, you know, sometimes I talk about the, what what is about, and I try to put some hints. I don't like to talk much about them, but I, I can. It's it's not a problem for me. Uh, but uh, I'm already what, what I'm saying today. It's yeah. a the same thing is what, what, I, what I, why I do art. It's, it's human condition, pain, mm. all things. And uh, I, I, I try to understand also, it's, it's, for me, it's such a wonderful tool. And uh, I encourage people to become artists. If you are, have uh, the young, you asked me about the young guys. If you have any kind of uh, opportunity of a door to become an artist, Go become one, because uh, I I really believe that our health future it always had uh, it has passed it it's it's an activity that we have along uh, uh, our 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 history as humans we always made art because it's an expression there are a lot of patterns in the universe expression is one of the patterns that we can find everywhere everything's trying to express the flowers it's uh, everything That's everything. Cool.
I'm really truly honored to spend this afternoon with you because I've learned so much about the art world, the digital art. I think a lot of people are still getting into that phase and not understanding it. And I'm so proud that you are also encouraging the young guys, you're incorporating oh, it. Your it's the future. Yeah, because they are the future. And if they're not getting in, I think today on the news, they were talking about TikTok, that the young people prefer TikTok because they're able to be themselves. And I think it's about embracing what makes you happy. And if I exactly, happy. but that, that's the thing. Mm. That's the thing. I really thank you so much, Adam. This is really, I thank you. Thank you so much.